guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, we're going to explore how you can customize your PowerShell prompt, or the part that appears when you're about to type a PowerShell command inside of your terminal session, using a few different techniques. First of all, we're going to take a look at how you can use ANSI escape sequences to color your text. We're also going to take a look at what's called a patched font, called nerd fonts that allows you to use glyphs from a bunch of different fonts which have all been aggregated into one. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how you can customize the actual positioning of different elements within your text prompts and how you can set conditional formatting for your prompts as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at my text editor, which is going to be Visual Studio Code. And Visual Studio Code is a great text editor for a variety of different purposes. I just happen to use it very frequently to author PowerShell scripts. Now, the other tool that we're going to be using today is iTerm2. So I've got iTerm2 here running on Mac OS. And as you can see, my PowerShell prompt has actually been customized. I have my name there before the prompt. And every time that I create a new line here, you can see that we're getting the date over here. And we've got this cool little, oops, this cool little font, or a glyph rather, that looks like a little clock before the time. So what we're gonna do, and you can also, sorry, you can also see that the time has been colored as well. So we're gonna take a look at how you can apply these same types of customizations. Now there's one more thing that I want to demonstrate to you before we get started. So that is if I go to this git folder, so I have a git repository under my home directory slash git slash Trevor dash web server. If I go into that directory, you can see that my PowerShell prompt has actually changed from the default, which is just my name, to actually being a dynamic prompt that has a colored Git icon along with the name of the branch that my Git repository is currently on, followed by the hash of the latest commit in the current branch. So we're going to take a look at how you can do something substantially similar to this in this video. So the first thing that you'll want to do is go out to what's called nerd fonts and grab the latest nerd font font. Now, depending on your platform, there's going to be a few different ways to install this. I happen to be on a Mac right now, so I would use Mac Homebrew to install nerd font. It is available on, on Homebrew, which makes it very convenient to install. However, if you're on a different platform, you may want to look up the directions for your particular OS. Now, if we take a look at the kind of diagram that they've provided here. What we can see, you might be wondering kind of what nerd fonts is. Well, nerd fonts basically takes a bunch of core fonts that are available from Google, uh, such as Source Code Pro or Ubuntu Mono or uh, Roboto Mono. There's a bunch of different mono space fonts that are very useful for coding if you want to customize your font like I do. And what they've done is they've basically taken those base fonts and then they've patched them by adding glyphs from a bunch of different icon-based fonts. So there's Font Awesome is a really popular one. There's also these material design icons, uh, which I haven't personally used before. There's also, you know, weather-related icons, dev icons that have a bunch of different, you know, developer types of icons, like uh, Visual Studio Code is actually in there. There's NPM, there's Linux, there's uh, an Apple icon, Stack Overflow icon, and a bunch of other cool things that you can use to customize your shell environment. So you could either use these in your PowerShell prompt like I'm going to, or you could just use these icons in the output of your various PowerShell scripts and functions that you're writing. So what they've done is they've basically taken all these different icon fonts and they've merged them together into a common font here on the right, which is nerd font. And there's a bunch of different nerd fonts depending on what your base font is going to be. So let me switch over to my terminal here and I'll do a brew search. So I'm gonna use Mac Homebrew to do a search for nerd. And if we just give this a couple of seconds to run, you'll see that we get back a bunch of different fonts. So we have font Roboto Mono nerd font. So that's the one that I'm currently using in my shell here. 
There's also, as I mentioned, Source Code Pro, Space Mono, Terminus, Ubuntu Mono, a bunch of different cool fonts that have all been patched with NerdFont so that we get all of these additional glyphs available to us. Now, one of the other things that I'll point you over to is your built-in character map tool, or in, in, in the case of macOS, it's called FontBook. FontBook allows you to inspect different fonts. So if I look at Roboto Mono Nerd Font, I can actually scroll through a huge list of all the different glyphs that are available to me in this particular font. And then if I want to use one of those, I can just click on it, do a Command C to copy it, and then go over to my editor and paste it or into my terminal. So in that case, I just uh, pasted a, a picture of a dice and I don't have any functions with that name. Um, so it's not going to uh, invoke any commands there. So it's just complaining about that. But if I put it in a string like that, you can see that it just echoes out that icon there. So what you want to do is start by just doing an inst installation of a font. So let's say I want to install Ubuntu Mono. I'll just do brew cask install font Ubuntu nerd font. So as you can see, the installation there was pretty quick. And if we switch back to our font book here, you can now see that I have this Ubuntu condensed nerd font and Ubuntu nerd font and a bunch of other stuff. So um, that's basically how you get fonts installed. But we're just, we're just going to use the Roboto Mono Nerd font for the time being. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to take a look at is how to customize your prompt with some of these glyphs. So what I'll do is I'll run from my terminal code, which is short for VS Code, and then I'll do profile, so the built-in profile variable that allows me to customize my <clears throat> PowerShell startup profile, and then I'll do dot current user all hosts. Um, I have a different video that talks about PowerShell profile customization, but um, I'm going to use the current user all hosts, which will apply to you know Visual Studio Code. It'll apply to iTerm2, etc. So let's go ahead and open that up. And so that's going to automatically open the file here in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, my prompt function is right here. And I have a little small helper function that just helps me get the latest uh, git commit. And uh, that'll give me the hash that you saw in the prompt earlier, where we had the git branch and then it followed by the hash. So essentially what we're going to do is take a look at this prompt function here. And as you can see, the way that I was able to get the time, the date and time over to the right hand side, is I actually repositioned the cursor in the PowerShell host. And the way that you can do that is by using this built-in variable called dollar $host. And that gives you access to retrieve the current coordinates, the kind of x, y coordinates of the cursor in your PowerShell terminal. However, you can also control the position of your cursor as well. So what we can do is basically reference this buffer size property that tells us the current size of our terminal buffer. So if we take a look at that, you'll see that my width is 86 characters and my height is 25 characters tall. So based on that, I know that I can position the cursor over at, you know, 86 or maybe 85 and 25, and that'll give me the lower right corner of the terminal session. So what I can do is I can basically say, give me the current line that the cursor's on by getting the cursor position here. So let's do that. So you can see my cursor when I ran that command was on line number seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So that's my Y coordinate. And then you could see that it was at coordinate zero for X. So based on these coordinates, I can then actually change the position of my cursor by creating this object called a coordinates object. And all you have to do is pass in where you want the cursor to go, the X and Y coordinates. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm generating a string, which is my date time. And then I'm subtracting the length of that content and subtracting it by two extra characters so that I can add in the clock glyph that you saw earlier. 
And then down here, I am calling write host and I am specifying this ANSI escape code here. And to do an ANSI escape code, we do care 27 followed by the escape code itself. So this right here is the actual escape code after the escape key has been hit, which is the character 27. And so this is basically just choosing a color. Um, it's that kind of teal color that you see over here, bluish teal color. And following that is my content. So I have this glyph here, which is unknown to Visual Studio Code because it's not VS Code is not configured to use the same font as my terminal. And so it looks like kind of a, a generic icon there. But you can see that I have that clock icon followed by my content, which is my date and time here. And then after that, we just set the cursor back to its original position so that we can uh, continue typing. So that's kind of how you customize uh, by positioning elements over to the right-hand side of the screen and then bringing the cursor back to the beginning so that you can provide your kind of normal prompt, so to speak. So in order to customize your normal prompt, you can add in some additional logic here. And uh, I kind of overcomplicated this a little bit, but basically I said, if I run the git log command and it matches the text fatal, that means that I am not in a git repository. And if the git log command succeeds, then I do know that I'm in a git a valid git repository somewhere in that in that subdirectory. So if I am inside of a git repository, then I want to basically spit out the latest commit hash and the git branch and substitute those in for these characters right here. So the number one is going to be the branch, and then the zero is going to be the commit hash that I get from this helper function up here at the top. And then all of this text back here is basically my ANSI escape codes that are coloring the git glyph or icon as red. So that's this little bit right here. So I'm basically creating an escape code. And then this kind of unknown glyph here is actually the git icon. Again, it doesn't match because I'm using a different font in VS Code than I'm using in iTerm2. And then we're doing another ANSI escape code that basically resets the color of the text back to the terminal's default color. And then following that, we're doing the branch, the commit hash, and then a little caret, and my cursor will appear after that. So that's basically how we get this little customized prompt here. Now, if I go back to a different directory that's not a Git repository, like my home directory, then you'll see that the prompt changes back to the default, which is just static text here. There's no customization, um, not well, not no dynamic text, I should say, being inserted here. It's just static text, which is my name. So there's a couple of different ways to retrieve glyphs. We already looked at the font book utility here, but the other way that you can retrieve glyphs once you've installed Nerd Fonts is to go over to the Nerd Fonts website at nerdfonts.com and then go to the cheat sheet page here. So what the cheat sheet page allows you to do that you can't do in font book is search for different icons. So let's say I go to the Roboto Mono Nerd Font in font book and search for a glyph like a clock. You'll see that I don't get, get back any results because if you hover over these different glyphs, you'll see that they don't have any description. They don't have any tags associated with them. However, what you can do is go over to the Nerd Font website and you can search for those glyphs and they do have the proper names there. So for example, let's say that I wanted a JavaScript icon. So here I can get the JS logo. Let's say I wanted a Node.js logo. So I can search for Node. There's a Node.js icon. There's a slightly different one and so on and so forth. So as you can see, there's a very easy way to just copy these glyphs directly from here. So let's take a look at the Git one that I used in my prompt. So here is that glyph right here. So what you'll want to do is once you find the glyph that you want to insert, you'll just do copy icon, and then you'll go back to your editor, and you'll select the spot where you want to insert that glyph. And you'll do a command V to paste it and it'll show up as a kind of an invalid generic character there. And 
Then what you can do is once you save that file, fire up a new PowerShell session. And then to test this out, we'll go over to your Git folder, go back to a valid Git repository folder, and you can see that that glyph does actually match. So let's change it to something else just to demonstrate how that works. So let's say I wanted to use this little Git square here. I'll copy that one, change that, save, the, save my profile script, and we'll start up another PowerShell session, go back to my Git repository folder, and we've now successfully changed it to this glyph. So make sure that you bookmark that cheat sheet page for nerd fonts if you plan on using this on a regular basis. Also, just keep in mind that you can configure Visual Studio Code to use different fonts. So what you want to do is go to your JSON preferences and then change your font family to the value that you see here in font book. So I'll do Roboto Mono with no space followed by a space nerd space font. And you want to put that in quotes as well because there is a space in the font name. So we'll save my settings.json file. And if we come back to my profile script here, you can see that these glyphs that I've inserted actually have now changed to the correct glyph because we've specified the correct font in my editor. So now that now the font that I'm using in VS Code and in my terminal, iTerm2, they now both match. And so up here on line number 14, we've got the little clock icon. Down here, we've got the little Git icon and so on and so forth. So that's how you can um, insert those glyphs into your PowerShell prompts. Um, that's about all I had for this particular video. If you guys have any questions about how to do this customization, just feel free to leave a comment on the video. Leave a like if you liked this video and feel free to just leave a comment and let me know what kind of other uh, content you'd like to see on this channel in the future. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.